Hi, if you've watched my video called the aggressive stock portfolio, then you'll know that in the past that I have invested in ETFs. Some of these ETFs are your standard index funds and some of them are aggressive leveraged ETFs. And today I'm going to show you why there are times that I have invested in these leveraged ETFs. And I'll also give you my very clear opinion on investing in these leveraged ETFs. If you're new to my channel, well, welcome. And my videos are all about investments that anyone in the world can make. First, I'll explain what an ETF is, and then I'm going to explain how a leveraged ETF works. And finally, I'll give you my opinion on investing in leveraged ETFs. So let's begin by talking about just your regular everyday ETF. So the acronym ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And an ETF is just simply a fund that owns assets. It can own barrels of oil, gold bars, shares in companies, or crypto kitties. Yes, I am serious. You can invest in digital kittens. No, I'm not going to do a video about it though. But generally when people talk about ETFs, they're talking about the ones that own shares in companies. So let's just hypothetically say that I start a fund with $1 million of Google shares, Facebook shares, Alibaba shares, Berkshire Hathaway, and I don't know, McDonald's shares. So I buy $1 million worth of each and the fund's total is now $5 million. This is just an example. Normally ETFs have like hundreds of different assets inside them. Now let's say you're interested in being part of this fund because there are some great companies inside. So I issue 1 million shares of my fund and I'm going to charge $5 each. So instead of you going out and buying all five companies, you can spend just $5 and have access to all five of these. So how an ETF is structured is that $5 investment that you put into my fund, well, that actually gets split up into the five different companies. So you have an ownership of these five companies now. So the reason an ETF is really popular is instead of you going out and buying like all these different companies, normally there's going to be like hundreds of companies inside this, remember? Instead of you going out and buying each individual company, well, the ETF packages it all nicely and easily for you. Plus, it would be expensive to go out and buy hundreds of different shares in companies. Now your $5 share in my fund will go up and down based on what happens to the stock performance of the assets inside the ETF. Also, your $5 share can be traded amongst other investors on the stock market. This is important because if you ever need the money for any reason, well, it's very easy to sell. And this is the difference between an ETF and a mutual fund. See, a stake in a mutual fund is not traded every day on the stock market. Now, another cool thing about an ETF is it's structured so that it doesn't ever become overvalued or undervalued compared to the assets inside. I could go into the details on exactly how this works, but let me save you some time and just say this. So each day, ETFs are bought and sold, and the role of the ETF is to rebalance every day based on whether there's more people putting money into the ETF or more people taking money out. They just sell off the assets inside the ETF. So to make sure this actually happens, the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, they're like the watchdog over the stock market. Well, they make sure the ETFs are reporting their holdings every day. So that means that anyone can check that the assets inside the ETF actually match the ETF value. Now, all of this stuff means that there are fees involved with owning an ETF. Depending on the complexity of the ETF determines the size of the fees. So a standard S&P 500 index fund will have fees about 0.04% per annum, but a more complex structure of assets might be closer to 1%. So there we go. That was my attempt at explaining how a standard ETF works. So I like to invest in the S&P 500 index because the underlying assets are the top 500 companies and that the fees are really low. As you can imagine, the stocks inside the S&P 500, some move up, some move down every day, but I'm going to get a weighted average of all of these movements. Historically, this has been a very successful strategy, increasing on average about 11%, including fees per year. You're practically investing in the entire stock market and it's a really good long-term strategy, especially for passive investors. You don't have to think, you always have the best companies and it compounds for you every year. And I believe that 99% of people who want to invest should be just investing in the S&P 500 index. And if you are just starting your investment journey, then I've made a video called New Portfolio Start Here. And I'll also leave a link at the end of this video to that. Okay, so I hope you have a handle on what an ETF actually is and how it kind of works. Okay, so now let me explain why in the past I have invested in leveraged ETFs. But before I do, please subscribe to my channel to get notified of all my new videos. Now, what I mean by a leveraged ETF is the value of the ETF moves up or down two or three times depending on what the underlying assets are doing. And the first question you're probably going to have is, how is that even possible? Well, it's actually some complicated math. And to simplify it as best I can, the ETF just borrows money. So each day, the ETF borrows money to gear up the performance by two or three times of the underlying assets. But simply, all you really need to know is that the goal of a leveraged ETF is to amplify the returns of the assets inside the ETF. 
So let's do a comparison between two different investments. The two different investments we're going to compare have the exact same underlying assets. The first is IVV, which is an index fund by BlackRock, and we're going to have $100 worth. And then SPXL, which is a 3x leveraged index fund, we're also going to start with $100. Now, if it goes up 10% on day two and up another 10% on day three, as you can see, their normal index fund would reach $121. And the three times leverage index fund would get $169. That is absolutely crushing the normal index fund because it has just gone up. But now let's look at scenario two, where it has gone up 10% on the first day and then just back down 10% on the second day. Now, even though it's gone up 10% and down 10%, doesn't mean we get back to our starting balance because if you take 10% of $110, you actually get to $99. So this little difference between our starting balance at $100 and $99, well, that's called volatility drag. So this next little bit I've actually borrowed from the UK spread betting channel on YouTube because they've already done the math for me. So in this scenario, we're going to take a 50 day period where 25 of those days, the market has gone up 5% and 25 of those days, the, the market's gone down 5%. Now, because of the volatility drag that I explained a little bit earlier, here is the results for the two different investments. Now, as you can see, our normal index fund has declined to $93.90 because of that volatility drag. Now let's look at the 3X leverage ETF fund. It has declined to $56.90. That's nearly a 50% value decrease just because of volatility drag. Okay, so the math doesn't look good for the leverage ETF. I agree. So why was I stupid and invested in this leverage ETF? Well, it was because I just didn't understand the math. So I invested in a leverage ETF called FAS, which is a 3X financial sector leveraged ETF. Inside the ETF, the assets were Berkshire Hathaway, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Visa, Mastercard, and some others. Not only did I really like these companies as solid investments, but I worked out that the underlying assets were far below fair value. The market had fallen a lot, and I placed my order on the 17th of March at the price of $19. I was confident that the assets were 30 to 50% undervalued. I then sold the ETF exactly three months later on the 17th of June for $35. So that was for an 88% profit in the three months. So that makes it a 350% return on investment. Now you might be thinking that this is great. Why don't I just keep doing this? I made great money in an amazing ROI. I'm pretty smart, right? Well, honestly, I'm an idiot and I got lucky. I shouldn't have done this and I actually regret doing it. Let me explain. Let's consider that the market was to turn sour instead. So as a simplified example, let's assume that the assets were to drop 20% instead. A triple leveraged ETF, just like the one that I had, well, it would have fallen 60%. So here's the key point. If it wasn't a leveraged ETF, well, if it has fallen 20%, well, it has to go up 25% just to get back to break even. But because it's a leveraged ETF and it's now fallen 60%, it actually has to go 150% up just to break even. Now, considering the triple leverage, that means the underlying assets inside the ETF would have to rise by 50% to get that 150% return because it's triple leveraged, obviously. In a nutshell, the mathematics just works against you for a leveraged ETF when the market goes down. Now, unless the assets were just to go straight up forever, which is unlikely, there's a clear negative bias over time. So now you're thinking, why would anyone do this when the math doesn't work out? Well, some people just like to take big risks and try to get big rewards. It's as simple as that. A regular ETF is just boring and a leveraged 3X ETF, well, that's a lot more exciting. And a lot of people just don't understand exactly what's going on with the mathematics. And I'll be honest, I was one of those. So to summarize leveraged ETFs, the volatility drag is working against you. The downside math is working against you. So just don't invest in leveraged ETFs. It's stupid. I was stupid, but I got lucky. Okay, now maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on myself. I did research the value of the underlying assets and I also did a risk reward calculation for the investment. In hindsight, what I should have done was I should have just invested more of my money into the companies that I like. I would not have got that 88% return in just three months, but I would have been taking out far, far less risk compared to the high risk associated with the leverage ETF. And as a value investor, what I really want to do is I want to minimize my risk as much as I can. I'm trying to do what Monish Pabrai would say, which is heads I win, tails I don't lose much. And with those words ringing in my ears, well, with a leveraged ETF, there was a high chance that I could lose a lot. I have no idea which way the market is going to go in the short term. Well, no one does. So essentially, I was making a 50-50 bet, and that's just not smart. I want to make bets that are 80% likely to happen, and even if it doesn't happen, well, I want my downside risk to be minimal. So I just have to put this down to a learning experience, and even making this video and calling myself an idiot has really helped me with this learning process.
I feel like I've learned something. I wouldn't do this again. And I'm going to look for investments where the maths and the leverage are working in my favor. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the like button before you leave and I'll see you in the next video.